Let's study the definition of economics as a science of material well-being. Now, as, it, as the word well-being itself suggests, what this definition tries to achieve is that unlike the definition of economics being a science of wealth, the focus is more on the material well-being of people. The reason was that, you know, a wealth is not useful unless and until it can be used for the betterment of the people. Two main people who were associated with this concept were Alfred Marshall and A.C. Pigou. Okay? Now, let's read the definition and I'll simultaneously explain to you what it means. So, in both the cases, let's understand the definition first. So, let's start with Mr. Alfred Marshall. A study of mankind in the ordinary business of life. So how a man deals with various situations in the ordinary business of life insofar as it relates to the second part which is what? It examines that part of individual and social action which is most closely connected with the attainment and with the use of the material requisites of well-being. So what it says is that economics basically studies mankind, okay, and it studies that part of the mankind behavior in the ordinary life, which basically deals with, which is most closely connected with how he achieves, attains, okay, and how he uses the materials, the material thing in the world, requisites of well-being, which can bring about some well-being to that person. Thus, it is on one side a study of wealth. Obviously, when you're talking about material well-being, okay, material requisites of well-being, we're talking about wealth. And on the other hand, and on the more important side, a part of the study of man. So the thrust is more on the man himself than the wealth. It recognizes that, yes, wealth is important because if a person does not have any wealth or, those, or the country, for that matter, does not have any wealth, then how can you bring about well-being to the people? Wealth is important, no doubt. But how this wealth can be used, more importantly, for the man himself is what is covered over here. Now, when we see the definition of Pigu, Mr. A.C. Pigu, I should say, not Pigu, uh, and pardon me if this pronunciation is incorrect, the range of our inquiry become restricted to that part of social welfare. So now he's even curtailing down the social welfare, right? That can be brought directly or indirectly in relation to the measuring rod of money. So the definition of Marshall said, it is a study of wealth, but it is also importantly study of man. A.C. Pigu said, we do study how economics helps in the social welfare of the people or how it can be used as a tool to bring about social welfare to the people, but only that much, which can be directly or indirectly measured in relation to the measuring rod of money. The reason why this definition focused more on money was that, you know, the purchasing power or how a man will satisfy his wants is determined with the use of the money. Now both these definitions are definitely better, okay, than the concept of economics being a pure study of wealth. It's wider, okay, because it concerns itself with the well-being of the people. But the downside is, there are two downsides actually, you know. In both these cases, we are talking about material welfare. Okay, how about immaterial things? There are so many other things. Let's say, if you talk about the services of a teacher, this is invaluable and immaterial. But that is not may, that may not necessarily be material. Right? And the second reason why this is criticized is that well-being is a concept which is very vague. Now, whether or not you achieve wellness of the people, is something which is very vague. It cannot be defined or measured precisely. And therefore, this definition is criticized to that extent. We hope you had a good time understanding this definition. Look forward to having you in many more such videos. You can also go to www.iidubook.com for 
many more such videos. Signing off from this video is Arinche, your educator for this video. Thank you.